guys welcome back to another video in today's video i'm going to be doing my best to answer some of the questions we got in our patreon group now patreon is a platform where you can support the channel now over the last couple of weeks we've been having a lot of trouble with youtube pretty much demonetizing every video even though our videos does not cross the boundaries of their t's and c's and they're basically just saying my videos are encouraging people to buy firearms now i don't know why that is a bad thing that would be the equivalent of saying people uh, making car reviews is aka according to how YouTube personnel think apparently is encouraging people to make car accidents, right? Because why else would you demonetize a video? Why is buying a firearm a bad thing? So that's kind of the struggles we're dealing with with the channel. So if you want to support the channel, if you like what we're doing, check out the Patreon down below. Or if you want to invest and upskill yourself, another way you can also support the channel is to buy either our precision rifle course or our reloading for precision course, which I'm gonna link down below too. I'd highly appreciate that. That helps us a hell of a lot with producing content for you guys. And another way we also get help is with our channel partners. And today's video is brought to us by Modular Driven Technologies. If you wanna pump out your rifle system like I have with my MDT chassis, check them out too. They're gonna be linked down below. So thank you MDT for also making videos like today's one possible. Now, without further ado, let's jump into our first question. Now, the Patreon guys, they don't hold back. They ask some wonderful questions, right? First question comes from Ash. Where do I buy sort of the tactical pants that I shoot matches in with the knee pads? So the pants I actually use is from a company called Cry Precision. I got those pants in America. What's really cool is the knee pads like switch out um, and they're quite soft and they don't actually strip to your knees. So you've got full mobility and they've also got like stretchy panels and stuff on the inside. So I really like those. Um, uh, yeah, but there's plenty of companies that make really good pants. They are expensive, so uh, yeah, but I only wear them when I shoot matches. So I think for me, that was a good buy. So Kevin asked, Am I planning on doing any matches in America at any time soon? Absolutely, I'm planning on doing matches in America. If it wasn't for COVID, I would have actually shot a PRS match um, in Washington State in the beginning of the year. Uh, it was called the Finley Cup, uh, and I would have shot that with Gavin Gear from Ultimate Reloader. And yeah, that pretty much, that plan got derailed due to COVID. I was gonna fly out uh, about three days after South Africa went into lockdown and unfortunately that didn't happen. Now, I was also gonna go shoot the Gap Grind, which was this past weekend with my friend Brad, um, but that obviously also didn't happen because we can't fly at the moment and America is listed as a red zone. So if I were to go, I would have to go into quarantine on the way back and with the little one, it's kind of not something that I'm really pumped about doing. But yes, I am planning on shooting matches going forward in America. Uh, my business partner and I were actually chatting about that last night, possibly myself and him shooting the gap grind uh, next year. Uh, I'm also possibly going to shoot the NRL championships uh, whenever that is. Um, so yeah, lots of exciting things. However, at the moment, I'm not really in a match shooting mode. You know, I'm, I'm in a content mode for you guys um, and I'm in a mode as to grow the businesses because obviously I left a job going from 10 years in the financial industry to doing this now. So I need to I need to grow this business and because I need to put my little one through university one day and school and all of those things. So shooting matches, especially shooting matches in another country is when you have a really weak exchange rate like, like we do, it's a very expensive endeavor. So yeah, I'm also waiting for my new match guns to come and then I'll sort of maybe get more serious into the matches. So yeah, but yeah, absolutely super pumped want to shoot a whole bunch of matches in America there's a couple of things that really appeal to me stateside which I'm excited to do one day so next question again comes from Ash dude you went big on the questions what is my favorite caliber of all time and why um, so that's a difficult one purely because I haven't been shooting for very long I've only been shooting for about three and a bit years and I haven't experienced all the wide variety of calibers I would say for now, my 6.5 Creed is probably my favorite caliber, and I think that maybe I'll get some flack for that, but it's super easy to load for, it's very versatile, um, it hammers, and it shoots well in every single Creed more I have, and at one point I had four, and now I have one. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really nice caliber. I think going forward, uh, that might change, and it probably will change as new things come available, but at the moment, I, I would have to say, based on my experience, Either the 6.5 Creed, because of its versatility, you can kind of do everything with it. 
If I was going to pick a long range caliber, the favorite one I've had so far was a 7 SOM um, short action ultra mag or R SOM as some would say, Remington short action ultra mag. That was a, that was a fun little caliber, but that, that rifle has since moved on. Um, but yeah, I would go for those two. Shorter range, versatile, 6.5 Creed, longer range stuff, 7 SOM, money. So our next question comes from Pierre and Pierre asks, what is the most important thing to know heading into a precision rifle match and the shooting sports world like rocking up at a match what is the most important thing to know i would say if you're rocking up to your first match the most important thing is to go in with the right mindset don't be tense you've got nothing to prove it's your first match go there learn and soak up as much information as you can if you go in with the wrong mindset and you're tense and you're worried about what other people are going to think I think it's not going to be a fun experience for you. So just relax. At the end of the day, you're there to do something you like, which is shooting. So just go there and have fun. And then sort of if you decide this is something you want to dive into, then you can get a little bit more serious about that. But for me, even when I go to matches, I'm very relaxed when I go to matches for the most part. Um, and I think that's that's the key thing. As long as you're going to have fun, then then you're going to have a good time. So don't overthink it. Just go have fun, keep an open mind, listen to what advice other people give you. Um, yeah, and uh, just put yourself out there and go, go out of your comfort zone and go shoot a match. That's the most important thing, just do it. Okay, so next Rich asks us, uh, I've always wondered why do you prefer headshots while hunting? Well, first of all, I don't really trophy hunt, so I'm not worried about um, destroying a mount. Um, I, we're hunting for meat, everything we consume almost every single day. I, I'm struggling to think of a day we haven't had uh, game meat that we harvested ourselves. Um, so I want to do as little as possible meat damage. Also, I want to get in a position where I can sort of make a headshot. So that for me is 300 ish meters um, if I know the conditions are available to do that. Okay. Um, and my rifle and my skill set and the position and everything allows me to do that. But for the most part, I really don't actually want to do that beyond. 200 meters, um, regardless of the conditions. Uh, so the reason I like a headshot is it's a clean kill, it's instant, um, and uh, yeah, I don't want the animal to even know that it's been shot and give the, those, you know, like sort of 40 meters uh, when it runs and, and eventually falls over from a heart lung. And I, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, even that is is a way more like it's it's a significantly faster kill. Um, then the alternative for that animal being hunted by a predator or dying eventually of starvation or thirst um, or old age or, or sickness. So, yeah, I just I just like it to be over and I don't like that shooting and, and seeing the animal run off, even if I know the shot was a banker. Um, so, yeah, that's why I typically try and take headshots when I can. Okay, our next question. This is a this is a really good one. And I'm going to keep it shooting related just because this is a shooting channel. If you could spend an hour with any person that has ever lived and have their full focus for a discussion on anything you choose to speak about, who would that be and what would you speak about? So I think if I was from a shooting perspective wanting to tap into one person, okay, I'd speak about mindset because I, for me this is everything when it comes to shooting. Like yeah, we can, you can learn new positions and you can learn how to keep your gun stable, but I'm really fascinated and intrigued by the mindset of people that do well under pressure. So for me, I don't think it's a, it's much of a surprise that that person would be Jerry Michalak. Um, now, I may do a video with Jerry soon, um, as soon as I can fly. Um, so we, we have actually spoken about that. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to do that, to sit down with him and basically just tap into that mindset and share that, not just not just keep it for me and share it with you guys. So that's something I really want to want to explore. And I'm super excited and thankful to possibly have that opportunity. So yeah, hopefully COVID like goes away um, so that first of all, the world can function. And second of all, I can I can make that happen for you guys and for me because Selfishly, that's for me, but I also want to share it for you because um, I think that will be fascinating because without a doubt he is one of the most decorated shooters of all time and I really am intrigued by how he's been able to consistently do that over four or five decades. It's remarkable. So yeah, that is something I really want to explore. Okay, so Francois asks us, Pete, 
uh, between a 24 and a 26 inch barrel, what would your recommendation be? What at sort of what point does it become too long of a barrel to run a muzzle brake to? I think either way with the 24 and 26, you should be fine. As soon as you start going longer than that for precision rifle stuff, as soon as you're going back and forth between, and I'm even seeing that by the way on my 223 that has a longer barrel on the, the rifle coincidentally behind me. Um, it is a little bit more challenging. I think we've got a 27 inch barrel on that. It's a little bit more challenging to sort of navigate through things. I like a shorter barrel, um, a consistent rifle, a shorter barrel is going to be easier to maintain zero, it's going to be a slightly stiffer um, and it's going to be more maneuverable. So I don't think the extra 50-75 feet per second you get by adding two more inches to that barrel is going to give you a significant enough advantage ballistically that it's worth that trade-off. Um, so yeah, I would say maximum for me I'd go 26 on a precision rifle uh, with a nice big contour um, just because of maneuverability everything like that but if you're looking for example to purchase an out-the-box 6.5 Creedmoor which happens to be one of the other questions I would just go for a 24 inch. You've got a big enough case, 24 inches is long enough to get that bullet running nice and quick. Don't worry about looking for a 29 inch 6.5 Creed. If you're gonna be doing precision rifle hunting, whatever, 24 is gonna be plenty with that specific caliber. Okay, Matt asks a really good question. When you're out at the range for practice, do you focus on one particular thing? For example, shooting off a PRS barricade or run various drills? Now, Matt, unfortunately, uh, it's quite ironic, right? So I make shooting videos for a living effectively now. Um, I've never worked harder in my life, by the way. This doing multiple videos a week is an extremely high uh, volume of work. Um, and as a result of that, I seldomly actually go to the range. In fact, this week for the first time in I would say months I've gone to the range to practice and not taken a camera with because I've got a match this coming weekend. So for the most part, I haven't been doing much shooting practice. However, when I do go to the range to shoot drills, um, I do go with a specific plan. You know, if you, for example, if we equated this to, to uh, just getting healthy, if you don't have a plan, it's going to be really hard to do that. And I find that going with, you know, 20 rounds or 30 rounds to the range with a specific plan. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to work on that. Um, that is going to give you better quality training over quantity training. Because often I see goes, oh, I shot like 150 rounds for the day. Like that really doesn't mean much. It's like going to the gym for four hours, but for two and a half hours, you're talking crap with your gym buddy, you know? Um, so I go, when I do go, I go with a very specific plan. I actually uploaded a video to the Patreon guys quite recently with some of the drills I was doing. We're adding a whole section of just specific training drills to the Precision Rifle course. Keep in mind that course is still $99 at the moment. I think you can still use the code IMPACT for a little saving there. Um, if the code has changed, I'll put a new code on there for you guys and we'll be building that out. And the goal of that course is to keep adding to it and making it basically the ultimate precision rifle course with every single resource you need to basically start from scratch all the way to pro shooter level. That's my goal of that course. So next, we'll be adding drills and things. As we keep adding to that course, the, the, um, the price of the course will keep increasing. So if you're interested at all, check that out. That's gonna be linked down below too. But yeah, we have a very specific drill set that I run when I go out and practice because I've got specific things I need to work on and when I sort of stitch those specific things together in a match environment, I find that everything flows much better and uh, yeah, you get a better result that way. Our next question is from Charlie, recoil anticipation. If I've ever had it, how do you overcome it and what is sort of my tips for new shooters to mitigate that? I think it was quite funny. One of the comments below that was get an APW Raptor break. So I can't argue with that. That's certainly going to help you. Um, I haven't, it's not something I've really struggled with at all. I know you shoot really big calibers, Charlie. For me, what I do, I shoot a lot of 22 rimfire um, when I do actually train um, or just when I go mess around at the range. And I think that really, really helps me a lot. Um, and on the rimfire, I look for very specific things throughout sort of my trigger squeeze process to help me um, not anticipate that shot or the recoil at least. And when I shoot a lot of 22, that sort of subconsciously trains me so that when I go over to center fire bigger rifles, I don't have much recoil anticipation. So I pretty much just 
am so focused on my shot process that I, I don't have the capacity to even anticipate the recoil. I have a solid enough sort of rifle shoulder value that the recoil is not really an issue with any of the calibers that I own. So yeah, I just think that subconsciously training yourself, focus on the fundamentals, and then whatever happens after that shot breaks, um, don't just focus on what you can control and ride the recoil. And that should help you mitigate that for the most part. Okay, next question from Eugene. He's currently got a PST Gen 2 in second focal plate in MOA. He'd like to change to MRAD, okay, and considering should he go uh, Strike Eagle or should you keep with the PST glass? Hmm, it's an interesting one. It depends what you want to use the scope for. I would say I'd be very happy to take the Strike Eagle. You get a little bit more field of view, you got locking turrets, so there's pros and cons to each. You're gonna get better glass with the PST, that's no question. Um, if it was me, hmm, obviously the PST is significantly more expensive now because I'm guessing you've had your current one for, for a while. Also going second focal plane to first focal plane, there's a bit of a price increase. You could probably sell your second focal plane PST now for what you paid for it, um, just because the prices have gone up recently. I would probably go Strike Eagle if I was you, if, if you kind of had to use that money to buy the next one. because you'd have to chip in a little bit to get to PST first focal plane level. And I think for myself, the features the Strike Eagle adds um, sort of offsets the marginal gain I get in glass quality because you're going to have the same reticle in both. So I would, I would be happy to go for the Strike Eagle. Okay, next question from Cornet. How do you get a 6.5 Creedmoor to over 9,000 feet per second? Well, that's quite simple, actually. You just keep adding more powder. Um, no, not advice at all. Don't do that. Um, don't worry about the speed. If you run the numbers in your ballistic app and you take 2.820, okay, versus 2.9, it makes no difference, like almost no difference. So don't worry about that. I will take a consistent rifle over a fast shooting flat rifle any day of the week because you're dining for your elevation for the most part our distances at the matches aren't crazy distances so just take a consistent load you're gonna get more barrel life your brass is gonna last longer you're gonna have less recoil to deal with consistency is key don't chase the speed next question do i have any goals to compete in sort of king of two mile or stuff like that eh, yay and nay um i think it's a really fun format you guys would have obviously seen I recently did that long range match with my wife. I don't like missing at all, okay? And there's a lot of missing involved with shooting those distances because there are so many variables, right? Especially this weekend. We had fishtailing winds the whole time. It, it was a really tough shoot. Um, I initially thought with my seven out of 28 hits, wow, I sucked. And then I saw sort of what the, what the other scores are of really good shooters, people I have a lot of respect for, and they weren't far ahead of us. Um, so it was clearly more difficult than I was expecting or than I thought it was. Um, but yeah, I also, from a monetary point of view, I have to be smart about sort of the rifles we own, the amount of shooting we can do. I think with ELR rifles, we can make a lot of cool content for the channel. So that is maybe something we'd look at. But for now, uh, I would need to develop myself in that area quite significantly. I like the more fast paced, you know, precision rifle style events that, that gets that floats my boat, gets my heart rate up. I like that. However, I like any form of shooting. So I think I kind of want to just be good at everything, but you can't be great at everything or, or good at everything and be exceptional at one thing. So for now, my focus is still going to be precision rifle. And um, for the most part, that's how we built this YouTube channel. Uh, and that's what I really enjoy. That might change as I get older, not as nimble, you know, the dad bod starts creeping in on you. Um, then I might sort of head down the ELR direction a little bit more. I am contemplating building a longer rifle or a bigger a bigger rifle, uh, maybe go 416, but the cost factor of shooting those is so freaking ridiculous um, that at the moment I, I think it would be a selfish thing to do. Um, so yeah, maybe in the future. Our next question is from Brad. What is the one thing that you changed or did that made an exponential difference in your precision rifle shooting ability? That is a very difficult question, Brad. Um, I kind of had this aha moment um, about a year, yeah, about a year and a half ago, where I kind of everything, it was almost like I had, it's very difficult to explain. It was almost like it was like, 
it's like the penny dropped and I was like, oh, this is, this is what this is. Um, and I think I kind of just got that from shooting a lot um, and competing a lot. And, and you guys have that ability in America. Like, I mean, you shot the gap grind this past weekend. You can mingle with the best shooters in the world. Like here, it's kind of like, okay, we have a match like every now and again. So it's difficult for us to, to compete as much as, as I would like to. Um, and that's one of the reasons that we're possibly looking at moving to the US. Um, first of all, I think the channel can do really well there just because we can, we can get rifles and components easier to review stuff for you guys. Um, I love my country, make no mistake, but from a business perspective, that would, that would make sense. And also, I want to compete against the best people in the world, which are in America, in, in my specific sport. Um, and I want to compete more often. So that is something we're considering sort of over the next couple of years. Um, but yeah, I kind of had this aha moment and everything sort of just seemed to click. Um, as I said earlier, I'm very fascinated by the mindset of competing. Um, and that is something that plays a large role in that, I think, to, to sort of have that mental capacity to not overthink things and keep it simple and just focus on the basics. And I think that's sort of what I do well at matches. I don't dwell on missed shots or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I really one day would like the opportunity to go to the US and be fresh, not having flown in two days before and shooting factory ammo to shoot my gun, my loads against the best guys in the world when I'm sort of not jet lagged out of my mind. Um, and really see how we stack up and actually do that consistently over a couple of months Because um, obviously every now and again, you'll have a good shoot You'll have a bad shoot to sort of average that out and see sort of where you stack in that would be really interesting And I'd love to learn from from those guys, too um, so yeah, that's a I can't say anything specific that I did It was kind of just like I had this moment where I was like Wow, okay. It's almost like I get it now for me um, but I absolutely, as I always say, I don't know everything, but however, I have put a lot of rounds downrange, um, which also is one of the reasons we'd, we'd want to move, because shooting here is ridiculously expensive. And that's why I can't thank everyone enough that asked the questions today that are part of the People of Impact, the Patreon group uh, that support the channel that helps us to make these kind of videos for you guys. So I want to thank you. Hold plums, this weekend we'll be shooting a match probably on Saturday, so you'll watch this on Saturday evening more than likely, and the match would be concluded, so hold thumbs, that was good. Um, as I said, we're gonna be driving, today's Thursday, tomorrow morning we leave at 3 a.m., it's a 1,200 kilometer drive, uh, so what's that, about 800 miles, I think? I'm not great at math. Um, shoot the match the next day and then drive home on Sunday. So uh, we've got two of the Patreon members driving up with me. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. And hopefully we have a really good shoot. It looks like it's going to be a windy bugger. Guys, I want to thank you for your questions. I'll get to some of the other questions in an upcoming video. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that down here. If you subscribed already, by the way, make sure you've clicked the notification bell. Leave me a comment, ask me a question. I'll do my, I always do my best to, to read through the comments, at least for the first couple of hours after the video goes up. I can't thank every one of you enough for um, supporting the channel. You guys are amazing. So subscribe down here. The Precision Rifle courses are down here. We're almost at 400 members on the courses and the feedback is insane. Also check out some of our other videos up here and I'll see you guys in the next one.